The Prowler, Part 12 I've spent the last few hours toiling in my chambers, planning the demise of these two busybodies, these two witnesses. You might be saying to yourself, Why don't you let them live? They didn't actually see you. You may be correct. I may be crazed. But we don't actually know what they saw and heard. The gardener could have seen the whole thing for all I know. He could have actually seen me leave the stables. And not just some shadowy figure, as he claims. Plus, I haven't killed in over a night now. With all the extra people around, it's been kind of hard to get away unseen. My blade is getting rusty from its lack of useful activity lately. It must be constantly lubricated with a splatter of blood. I've come up with my plan to dispose of these two nosy miscreants. I believe I'll follow the maid when she shops for the produce and kill her off property. While the gardener, I will sneak off and kill while the All Hallows' Eve ball is taking place tomorrow night. I think it's perfect. Not being cocky at all, when I say I do come up with the cleverest of plans. Not opinions, just facts. I prepared my tools and waited for Gertrude to head to market. She was off to pick up the freshest of produce for the Hallows' Eve ball tomorrow night. I peered out of the parlor window and saw her take her leave. I maneuvered myself outside and followed closely behind. She was on foot, so I stayed on foot. A bit of luck came my way when she approached the tree line and made her way into the forest. A shortcut, I'm sure, was her thinking on her decision to take the woods. But little did she know, it will be her undoing. The only thing that will be getting cut is her throat. <laughs> As she neared the exit of the trees, I hastened my speed. In my quickness, I stepped on a fallen tree branch and had made a loud snap. It, of course, startled her, and she turned quickly, but thankfully... I was able to hide behind the tree that was just to the right of me. I quickly pulled my blade from its sheath, and just as she turned back around and caught her breath, I leapt out from behind the tree and plunged my blade in the back of her skull. Short and sweet. I didn't have all day to mess around here. She didn't die instantly, so as she took her final breath, I took the things that made her a witness, her ears. I severed them nice and cleanly, then placed my poem on her body. Before leaving, though, I looked down at her and smugly said, You should have minded your business. You should have told the reporter nothing. I collected my things, then went back to the manor. Thankfully, this endeavor was so quick, no one even noticed I had left. I quickly made my way up to my chambers and secluded myself inside until dinner. I spent the hours preparing for tomorrow evening's costumed affair. I tried on my costume, making sure the fit was proper, then laid it out along with the mask. Then I made sure my shoes were properly polished and frills starched accordingly. A proper costume, indeed. As I finished up, Mr. Lyles gently rapped on my door, informing me dinner was about to be served. I followed him downstairs, talking as we walked. I noticed some servants bringing in large amounts of food for the party. When Lyles informed me that Gertrude had not been heard from in hours and that he had to send a few servants out 
to complete the order that Gertrude was supposed to take care of earlier. I feigned concern over Gertrude, all the while laughing on the inside. I told him all is well. I'm sure she'll pop up eventually. <laughs> the manor was looking festive, I thought, as I sat down at the dinner table. Frightening decorations were being adorned throughout the manor, along with the tables and chairs being set up and the harpsichord being turned for the occasion. Everything was shaping up quite nicely, I must say. Brother and father were already at the table waiting for me, and I must say what a sad lot of fellows that sat before me. Pep up, gentlemen, I thought. It's almost party time, you sad shites. Of course, with the murders that just transpired at the manor, there were a few individuals around here who thought it best we cancel the party. That they thought it'd be in poor taste. Mainly my brother, of course. Look at him. There he sat, splashing around in his pea soup like a simple bastard. Grieving over that floozy of a wife. Disgusting. As I was saying, I put a stop to that shite quickly. No one was going to put a stop to my All Hallows Eve ball. No one. Dinner was very uneventful, and I finished my meal as quickly as possible and retired back to my chambers. I needed a proper night's rest for tomorrow's activities. I cleaned up my instruments from earlier, then went to bed, staring into the candle flame as I drifted off. I slept beautifully and was awoken with the delivery of my coffee and paper from James. I guess Gertrude's body hasn't been discovered yet, because that bastard Parker Johns hasn't written of her demise. That, however, opened the door for that bastard Jack the Ripper to steal my headlines. He struck again last night. I felt the rage starting to boil inside me, but I did my best to calm down quickly. Today was a big day, and I wasn't going to let that prick Jack upset it. My mind was focused on Lady Smith and the ball. I spent the day preparing and toiling the hours, making sure everything was perfect. Every last detail was taken care of. The time had finally come, and it was time to prepare for the ball. I washed, then covered myself in the finest oils and powders from France, smelling like a proper gentleman, then made sure my hair and goatee was properly brushed and waxed. Then I stood in front of the mirror and put on my costume. First the white leggings, then the purple trousers, then the white undershirt, next the black vest, buttoned up tightly, followed by the black coat with purple trimmings. Perfect, I thought. I then slipped on the purple demon's mask and went downstairs to wait for Lady Smith to arrive. As I made my way down the stairs, guests started to arrive and were ushered into the ballroom. I went out and stood on the front steps waiting for my beautiful date. The finest couples from the finest families greeted me as they walked by. Everyone wanted to be here. Everyone wanted to attend the first Hollow's Eve ball. Even members from the royal family were in attendance. After a few minutes, I spotted her carriage come into view. Butterflies swarmed my stomach like an excited child on Christmas morning. I wanted this evening to be special. I had plans for Lady Smith. Her carriage came to a stop, and I opened the door. Her outreached hand greeted me, and I helped her down the carriage steps. She looked stunning in her turquoise dress and matching mask, resembling a disembodied spirit. 
Hello, my love. I've missed you so, I said lovingly as I kissed her hand. She smiled and said she had missed me as well. I ushered her inside and escorted her to the ballroom. We danced right away as the orchestra played the waltz of the dead. I stared into her hazel eyes as we twirled around the room. As the song came to an end, I kissed her. Then we found a table off to the side away from the maddening crowd. I got us some refreshments, and we sat and talked, picking right back up from where we were before. There couldn't be two more people in as much love as we. So on our favorite holiday, during the beautiful All Hallows Eve ball, I took to one knee and proposed to the hauntingly beautiful Lady Smith. I've crossed oceans of time and endless tomorrows to be with you, my love. Will you marry me? I asked most nervously. She looked at me for but a moment, then smiled and said, Yes, but of course. I announced the news to the entire room, and we received a roarous ovation. I then took my bride's hand and we danced, danced throughout the night. We then sat and had dinner, bringing in an Italian chef direct from Rome to cater to her culinary needs. The meal was delicious. The night and my plans were unfolding perfectly. But as I sat laughing and talking with Brandy, I noticed in the corner of my eye the gardener. He was performing secondary duties tonight and was ushering in and out trays of food. My mind suddenly remembered the sinister task I was supposed to carry out at this catered affair. While yes, I was preoccupied with other things, more lovely and beautiful things, I'm still a killer and I had a witness to dispose of. While continuing my conversation with Lady Smith, I continued to stalk my prey. When he picked up an empty tray of food and started back towards the kitchen, I excused myself from the table and told my bride I would be right back. I followed and peeked through the opening of the pantry door to see him exit through the back door of the kitchen. I then entered the kitchen making my way past the staff, then out of the back door, where I saw him heading towards the stables. I followed, making my way towards the stables as quickly and as quietly as possible. When I reached the stable door, I peeked through the crack and found the gardener putting some hay in the horse's stalls. I reached inside my vest and pulled out my blade. No more rust, I thought. It's time to wet the blade. I slithered inside the stable like a venomous snake and emerged from the shadows, surprising him instantly. Here's your shadowy figure, I said menacingly as I raised my blade in the air. Before he could cry out, I brought it down with such violent anger slashing it across his face. He fell to the ground. I then grabbed his head by the hair and stretched out his neck, slashing the blade across his exposed throat. You should have kept your bloody mouth shut, I said to him tauntingly as he took his final breaths. I then gouged out his eyes for my trophies and placed my poem upon his corpse. I then turned with my bloody blade in one hand and eyeballs in the other, when I saw to my surprise standing before me, my bride. I stood there in complete shock. All I could say is, hello, my love.
I would like to give a heartfelt thank you to the special friends of the channel for your overwhelming generosity. If you would like to support the channel, the link is below in the description. Also, please send me your stories and poems to duchessofdarkness27 at gmail.com. You can also find me on Instagram at duchess.ofdarkness and Twitter at duchessofdark and two. I want to thank all my listeners for your kindness, your encouragement, and your support. It means the world to me. Thank you for joining me. Until next time.